So we will continue the story, the life of Sri Goranga Das Babaji, Madan Taur. Uh, so I will start now. We have already described the life of Sida, Sri Goranga Das Babaji, of Ramanreti, Vrindavan. <clears throat> Another Siddha Mahatma of the same name lived near the Samadhi of Sanatana Goswami in Madan Taur in Vrindavan. He was too old and he could walk with great difficulty. It was not necessary for him to move out of, of his kuti because people respected him as a Siddha Mahatma and wanted to serve him with their heart and soul and cater to all his needs and requirements. But he believed that dependence on anyone for anything was an obstacle in bhajan. Even though he could not walk easily and he took half an hour to climb the few steps at the door of the Samadhi, he went out for Madhukari every day. He led a very austere life and never touched money. One night, Goranga Das Baba could not sleep. He passed the whole night turning sides on his bed in a peculiar kind of restlessness. Restlessness. In the morning, he called Vaishnava. Who lived nearby and said, "Look, Baba, if there are bugs in my look, Baba, if there are bugs in my bed, they did not let me sleep the whole night." As the Vaishnava removed the bedding, he saw not bugs but some rupees spread out on the cot. He took out the rupees and showed them to Baba. As soon as Baba saw them, he was shocked and scared, as if he saw not the rupees, but the snake or scorpion. He said, Look, that is why I said there is something underneath my bedding, which did not let me sleep throughout night. Rupees! And the rupees, not of an ordinary person, but of a licentious Raj who came yesterday, could they let me sleep? The poison of snake or scorpion kills only when they bite, but the poison of rupees kills without biting. Take them away from here at once. Offer some bog with the money to Madan Mohan and distribute prasad among the Vaishnavas. The previous day, a Raja had come to Baba for his darshan, he saw that Baba did not touch money. He had secretly kept some money under his bedding so that he might use, use it throughout uh, some. Um, so he, he had secretly kept some money under his bedding so that he might use it throughout some, through, throughout someone without himself touching it. He did not know that the money could plague Baba even without his touching it. This reminds one of the experience of Siddha Sri Jagannath Das Babaji, who was offered a rupee by someone. While being carried somewhere in his old age by his disciple Bihari on his shoulder, Bihari put the money in his pocket. Even then, the rupee began to bite Baba like a scorpion because it had come to his knowledge and he had touched it with his mind, if not with his hand. Bihari had gone only a few steps forward when Baba asked him to turn back. He went to the house uh, of the donor and said to him, You are a rich man. 
I could not bear the bite of a single rupee. I wonder how you bear the bite of thousands of them. <laughs> a rupee neither stings nor bites, but it is the most powerful agent of Maya, which plagues and bites. The bite is not felt by a worldly man who is accustomed to it, but the Mahatmas whose heart is pure cannot tolerate it. A dot of dirt cannot be easily detected on a cloth, which is dirty, but it is easily detected on a sheet of cloth, which is spotlessly white. Similarly, even the subtlest attack of Maya, directly or indirectly, is easily detected and repulsed by Siddha Mahatmas like Goranga Das Babaji whose heart is pure like crystal. That Gorangadas Baba had not allowed Maya in any form to come anywhere near him is apparent from the manner in which he passed away from, his, from this world. Only an hour before he left the body, he called the manager of the temple of Madan Mohan and said, You take away everything that you find in my kuti. The manager said, Baba, there is nothing in your kuti that anyone can use. Baba felt satisfied. Only a short while after he said to Sanatan Das, the Pujari, of the Samadhi of Sanatana Goswami. Sanatan, look, Mahaprabhu has come. Give him asan. Give him asan to sit. As he said this, people who had come to the Samadhi of Sanatana Goswami for darshan saw a flash of supernatural light appear. Um, in his um, uh, in his kuti, with the disappearance of the light, he also disappeared from this world. Wow. I, I will read this last sentence again. So, this last paragraph I want to read again. Uh, only a short while after he said to Sanatandas, the pujari of the Samadhi of Sanatan Goswami, Sanatan, look, Mahaprabhu has come. Give him asan. Give him asan to sit. As he said this, People who had come to the Samadhi of Sanatan Goswami for darshan saw a flash of supernatural light appear in his um, in his kuti. With the disappearance of light, he also disappeared from this world. Wow, this was a beautiful story. Very short but very special. I'm sure you also, do you know who, what happened actually while he leaving his body? Actually, it was Goranga Mahaprabhu who came to take him. This was so obvious from this. Amazing. Does anyone have any thoughts to share maybe on this story what if you if you actually if you'd like to uh, what what was that that touched you or some thoughts maybe
Okay, then I will continue with this next story, the next uh, uh, narration. It is uh, about Sri Nityananda Das Babaji of Nanda Gaon. Nityananda Das Babaji was born about the year 1890 as the son of the Raj of Darakot in Orissa. It was settled at the time of his birth that he would be adopted by the Raj of Parikred and govern the state after him. But he was born with strong samskaras of bhakti. According to a design of the Lord, he was to be the Raj not of Parikrit, but of the hearts of thousands of people as their spiritual master and preceptor. Even before the adoption ceremony could take place, he sneaked out of home. He first went to Alalnat beyond Jagannath Puri. There he had the darshan of the eight feet long Shila slab of stone on which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had once prostrated while making obeisance to the deity Alalnath and left on it the sign of every par part of his body that touched it. Probably some of you have seen this is a big slab of stone that has melted underneath uh, Mahaprabhu. It, it has marks of Mahaprabhu's body on it in a temple. As Nityananda made obeisance to the Shila, his heart was overfilled with praying, and he became unconscious. From Alalnath, he went to Puri, and from Puri to Navadvip and Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, he took Mantra Diksha from Sri Madhusudan Goswami. Um, a Goswami in the disciplic succession of Gadadhar Pandit, one of the closest associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Sanyas Diksha from Sri Shyam Charan Babaji, a Babaji in the disciplic succession of Gopal Guru. Thus dressed as a Vaishnava sannyasi, the young Babaji, who would have been the Raj of Parikud, began to roam about in the villages and the forests of Raj, always chanting the name and living on whatever he got in Madukari. He did not live at one place because he was afraid that his parents might come and take him back. He slept, he slept on each night uh, under a different tree. While sleeping, he did not lie down but kept reclining on the trunk of the tree so that he might sleep as little as possible and chant as much as possible. Wow. Slowly, he conquered sleep to such an extent that he slept only two or three hours a day. Once he decided to do kirtan continuously for three days and nights, in his imagination, he wrote a letter to Nidra Devi, the goddess of sleep, praying not to come near him during his period, this period and kept the letter under the feet of the Lord, thus making Nidra Devi herself sleep comfortably under the lotus feet of the Lord for three days. He did kirtan for three days and nights without a wink of sleep. He did not himself go for Madukari during this period. Another Babaji brought Madukari for him 
and did kirtan in his place for as long as he took in going for the call of nature, bathing and eating. So this other Babaji was helping him, replacing him in his kirtan for a short time. Nityananda Baba moved from place to place for a number of years. Then he settled in Nandagaon. He began to live in the Kadam, Kadam Kandi of Nandagaon. Uh, this Kadam Kandi is placed covered by a cluster of Kadamba trees. There, he once performed the Purash Charan of Mahamantra. After Purash Charan, he became Siddha and his fame as a Siddha Mahatma spread far and wide. In the Kumbha Mela of Vrindavan, he was elected as the Mahant. Mahant means the head of the four Vaishnava Sampradayas. He also, soon he also soon had a large number of disciples. The empire of which the Lord had desired him to be the Raj began to come into shape. How much the Lord was himself instrumental in building that empire for him is evident from the following example. A young boy who had renounced the world was standing before Lord Jagannath in the temple of Jagannath in Puri and saying, Prabhu, I have renounced the world in order that I may attain your lotus feet by doing bhajan under the guidance of a guru. But the guru can be attained only by your mercy. I have heard stories of your causeless mercy upon the helpless and unworthy jivas like me. Would you not have mercy on me? He was praying like this and weeping. At that time, the figures of Balaram and Subhadra standing on his either side disappeared from his view. He saw only the big round face of Jagannath shedding tears from his eyes. Jagannath was weeping because he pinned for his company as much as he pinned, he was longing for him. But he could not understand this. He thought that he was weeping because he had committed some offense against him. He went to the temple of Bimala Devi, or it says Vimila, actually Bimala. Before her also he wept and prayed in the same manner. He saw one hand of the Shimurti of Vimala moving. Perhaps by moving her hand, she indicated that he had her blessings. But this also he could not understand. He then went to Navadvip in search of the Guru. There, one day, while he was having the darshan of Gauranga Mahaprabhu in the temple of Mahaprabhu and praying to him for the discovery of the Guru, he saw a strange scene. The fir he first saw Mahaprabhu in the figure of Shri Krishna, then Radha, and then of a blue-colored Saki. He was surprised. The whole scene remained to, to him a mystery. But as he had this darshan, he felt prompted by Mahaprabhu to go to Vrindavan. On reaching Vrindavan, as soon as he got down from the train, he saw Nityananda Das Baba. He had once met Nityananda Das Baba in Puri. Therefore, Baba recognized him. 
he took him to Nandagram. The boy lived with him and soon recognized him as his guru. He took Mantra Diksha from him and felt relieved of his anxiety. He requested Gurudev to give him his photo so that he might keep it with him and worship. Gurudev sent for Kali Babu, the photographer, who was his, who had his studio in Gopinath Bazar in Vrindavan. When Kali Babu had set the camera to take Baba's photo, Baba asked the boy to go and see whether the camera was properly focused on him. The boy took the permission of the photographer and flung the back curtain of the camera over his head. As he fixed his eyes on Gurudev through the lens, he was surprised to see not Gurudev but the Saki whom he had seen in the Vigraha of Sri Goranga in Navadvi. On removing the curtain, he saw not the Saki but his Gurudev Sri Nityananda Das Baba. The boy understood that his Gurudev was the Saki of Radharani that Goranga Mahaprabhu had by appearing to him as Krishna, Radha and his Gurudev in the form of Saki had tried to convey to him that Krishna and Radha were not different from him and that his Guru in the form of Saki was also non different from Radharani as one of her manifestations. Wow. He also understood that Gauranga Mahaprabhu had by prompting him to go to Vrindavana and Nityananda Baba to go to the station just at the time of his arrival there had mercifully helped him in finding his guru. In this way, Shyam Sundar Das, Gopinath Das, Gaur Govind Das and many others who later became famous Mahatmas as well as thousands of householder devotees were made by the Lord to accept him as their guru and add to the glory of the spiritual empire of which he became the Raj. Ever since Nityananda Das Baba became Siddha, He tried to conceal himself. But how can one conceal himself in the lo if the Lord wants him to be known by everyone and adored? No one knew him in far no one knew him in far off Amritsar. There also the Lord made him known through a devotee who served the Sri Vrigraha of Radha Shyama Sundar. Shyama Sundar once said to him in a dream, You take us both to Nityananda Das of Nanda Gaon, whose loving service we now want to enjoy. The devotee took them to Nityananda Baba and told him, told him all about the dream. Baba recognized Archan or the service of Sri Vigraha as one of the important forms of bhakti, but he was himself not interested in it. He was a freelance, <laughs> he was a freelance. He wanted to stay where he liked and go where he liked, living only on Madukari and doing kirtan, which he regarded as the highest form of bhajan. The service of Shiv Vigraha pinned one down to one place and compelled him to beg for all kinds of things required for the service of the deity or demanded by him, by the deity. But, but since Radha Shyama Sundar had now come of their own, he had to say to the devotees, look, I'm incapable of rendering proper service to Radha Shyama Sundar, but since they want me to serve them, you leave them here. I shall do what I can. The devotee felt very much grieved at heart to notice Nityananda Baba's indifferent and somewhat 
disregardful attitudes towards the divine couple who had chosen to be his guests. Any other guest would have frowned at, at this and turned back, but Radha Shyama Sundar had not. Uh, Radha Shyama Sundar had not come to go back. They were aware that uninvited guests are not only unwelcome, they have sometimes to suffer indignation and admonition of the host. Still, they had come. They were strange guests who enjoyed the indignation and admonition of their devotees even more than their praises. Baba installed the Sri Vigrahas, Sri Vigrahas of Radha Shyama Sundar in a kuti near Maduka Shoda Nakund in Nandagram and deputed his disciples in their service. This kuti became a small ashram of Baba. He did not make any special arrangements for the service of Radha Shyama Sundar. They were offered in bog whatever the Babaji got. But what, whatever the Babaji's got in Madukari, if a disciple wanted to make any special arrangement for them, he said, We are not going to change ourselves on account of them. We shall remain the beggar Babaji's that we are. It is they who will have to change themselves. Since they have come to Babaji's, they will have to live like Babaji's. They will have to eat what we eat. If any day they, they, if any day they desire to eat Malpura, Malpura or Ladu, they can go to Nanda Baba's place, which is near, and, and sit and eat. <laughs> After the attainment of Siddhi, Nityananda Das Baba decided to pass the rest of his life in preaching Harinam Sankirtan. With this purpose, he founded a society called Haribhakti Pracharim Sabha, which uh, with is its center in Mathura. He performed Akand, like non-stop Harinam Sankirtan at Hatara Aligar. Jaipur, Delhi, Amritsar, Vrindavan, Jagannath Puri, and a number of other places. At each place, the Sankirtan lasted for a month. Wow. Two months or a year. He also performed a month-long Akand Kirtan every year at the time of Ratayatra in Jagannath Puri and at the time of Kumbha Kumbha Mela, in Prayag, Haridwar, and other places. He used to say that Nam Kirtan was the most important of all kinds of bhakti sadhana. Harinam yielded fruit not only if sung, but also if heard, written, or seen in the written form. So, I'll repeat. Harinam yielded fruit not only if sung, if it was being sung, but also if heard, written, or seen in the written form. Wow. He said that there are two stages of Nam Sadhana. The first is the stage of Nama Graha, in which the sadhak has to make an effort to chant the name a prescribed number of times. The second is the stage of Namashraya, Nam in which the sadhak is completely surrendered to Nam. He can't live without chanting the Nam. He knows nothing except the Nam. In this stage, the Nam attracts Krishna 
and he is bound to appear before the sadha. Baba was not against Ashtakalya, uh, uh, Ashtak, Ashtayam probably wants to say Ashtakalya Lila Smarana, but he said that Nam Sankirtan was superior to Lila Smarana. He said that Nam was a wish fulfilling tree, Kalpataru. There is nothing which the sadak could not attain if he took shelter under it. Continuous watering of the tree through kirtan or japa made it sprout and grow into leaves and branches of Krishna Lila. In the initial stage of the sadaka, he discouraged Lila Smaran. Hmm. In, in, in the initial stage of the sadaka, he discouraged Lila Smaran. He said, Lila Smaran is not a joke. The sadak who does Lila Smaran has to undertake some kind of service to the divine couple in Smaran. They accept the service regularly done in Smaran. Failure to render the service at appointed times means offense. Nityananda Das once told his disciples that the Babaji used to render their service of pekadan, this means a pot into which the peak or the liquid created in the mouth by chewing betel be, uh, is spat. Um, so, Nityananda Das once told his disciples that the Babaji used to render the service of Pekadan in Smaran to Radha Krishna in Seva Kunj. Once he could not render this service on account of some other occupation. Next morning, when he went to Seva Kunj, he was aghast to see the red marks of spitting out the peak. The red liquid caused by chewing betel here and there in Seva Kunj. It was evident from this that the sadak who, who did Lila Smaran had to be free from all other occupations. Nityananda Baba also believed in the importance of sadhu seva, service of the sadhus mainly by feeding. Wherever he organized Nam Yagya, he also performed sadhu seva in a grand scale. What is surprising is that he never touched money. He went to the place empty-handed and returned empty-handed. But at the time of sadhu seva, men and money mysteriously poured in from somewhere. Sometimes he said to a merchant, I have to perform sadhu seva after the nam yagya. You supply all the provisions. I shall pay whatever money comes for the yagya. If I cannot pay the full amount, I shall pay what remains on some other occasion with interest. If in the meantime I die, I shall take birth again to clear your debt. Wow. Um. The merchant, the merchant knew that Baba always got sufficient money to pay for the bill and he never ran into debt. So he gladly gave him everything in as much quantity as was needed. Once he performed Nam Yagya in Vrindavan at the time of Kumbha Mela, Set Hargulal, the richest man of Vrindavan at that time, came to him and said, Baba, I understand that you are going to perform Nam Yagya. If I can be of service, kindly let me know. Service? Would you do the service I suggest? said Baba in a loud tone. Why not, Baba? You have only to order. 
All right. Send 100 tins of ghee. Tins. Send 100 tins of ghee. What will you do with one tins? 100 tins of ghee, Baba. You will see what I do. Hargulal did not believe. He said he sent 10 tins of ghee. 10 tins of ghee was meaningless for Baba in view of the grand scale in which he wanted to do Sadhu Seva. The same night, Radha Krishna said in a dream to a big merchant of Kampur, in Vrindavan, at the time of Kumbha Mela, Mahant, a great saint, the head of an ashram, Nityanand Baba, Nityanand Das Baba is doing Nam Yagya. Send him 100 tins of ghee and wheat flour, sugar, and other things in correspondingly similar quantity. The, the next day, <coughs> the next day, the merchant arrived at the camp of Nityananda Das Baba with hundred tins of ghee and trucks lo truck loads of other provisions. He said to Baba, Baba, are you Mahant Nityananda's Baba? Last night Radha Krishna asked me in a dream to supply these provisions to you for the Bhandara. It means a grand feast you are going to hold. Kindly accept. Baba said, I am not a Mahant. I also do not know anything about the Bandara. Mahant and Mahant are they who appeared to you in the dream. They will do the Bandara. I shall only watch. You can leave the provisions. After the conclusion of the Nam Yagya, Baba performed the Bandara, the big feast in which all the sadhus of all the sampradayas were fed. The size of the bandara can be imagined from the fact that 200 cooks had to be engaged for it. Baba organized a similar one-year-long kirtan yagya and bandara at Hataras. A specialty of the yagya was that the Sri Vigraha of Mahaprabhu of Gopinath Bazar and Siddha Sri Gorangadas Babaji of Ramanreti, Vrindavan, also graced the occasion with their visit to Hataras. When the devotees of Hataras uh, requested Nityananda Das Baba that the Sri Vigraha of Mahaprabhu should also be carried to Hataras, Baba said, How is that possible? Sri Vigraha should not be carried from one place to another except in time of emergency. You do not know how much the big Shri, Vig uh, big Shri Vigraha of Mahaprabhu would be inconvenienced, inconvenienced if he is carried from Vrindavan to Hataras. If you insist on taking him there, I shall not go. But on seeing the loving insistence of the devotees, Mahaprabhu himself became restless to go. Uh, he said to Nityananda Das Baba, I shall go. Nityananda Das Baba then said, I shall go only if Mahaprabhu goes. The servant of Mahaprabhu, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Goswami, did not know what to do. He could neither disregard the insistence of the Mahapurusha and the devotees, nor tolerate the inconvenience and the hardship Mahaprabhu would have to go through in being carried so far. When the devotees requested him for permission to take Mahaprabhu to Hataras, he said, What can I say? Ask Mahaprabhu himself by, draw, by drawing lots before him. Ask Mahaprabhu himself by drawing lots before him. Two slips of paper, on one of which was written, I shall go, on the other, I shall not go, <laughs> were folded. So these two papers were folded. On one paper, it was written, I shall go. On the other paper, it was written, I shall not go. And these papers were folded, folded and placed before Mahaprabhu. 
a child was asked to pick one of them. He picked the one on which was written, I shall go. The devotees sprang up with joy and shouted, Mahaprabhu ki jai! They took him to her terrace with utmost care to see that no inconvenience was caused to him. For one year, Akant Harinam Kirtan and Kata went on in her terrace. Kirtan was held round the clock. Kata every day in the evening. At the time of Kata, discourse were delivered first by Nityananda Das Baba, then by Goranga Das Baba. Nityananda Das Baba spoke on Sadan, Goranga Das Baba spoke of, on Rasa. Nityanand used to say to the devotees, I clean your hearts by speaking on sadhan. Goranga Das Baba makes it attractive for Krishna by filling it with rasa. Even today, when the devotees of Hataras think of the rasa ganga, which flowed in Hataras during those days and in which they freely bathed, their eyes are filled with tears and the hairs of their body stand on end. After Hataras, Baba organized a similar one-year-long one year long Kirtan Yagya in Aligarh. Uh, thousands of men and women participated in the Yagya. The women participated during the day, the men at night. In the Yagya, there was a shortage of ghee. Baba asked each woman to bring one spoonful of ghee. <laughs> so much ghee was collected that not spoons, but streams of it were constantly poured into the Yagya. After the conclusion of the Yagya, sweets were left over in such a huge quantity that a packet of sweets was sent as prasad to the house of each Hindu of Aligarh. Besides, so much money was received in donation that two halls were constructed for Kirtan and Satsang. So just imagine, Nityananda Das Baba could not accept money but Krishna, Radha Krishna, Radha Shyama Sundar and, and Gauranga Mahaprabhu was helping him so much that he had never had any shortage of anything that he needed for his uh, kirtan and seva. So, in the yagya, the people got an opportunity to have a glimpse of Nityananda Baba's many supernatural powers or siddhis, including his Asan Siddhi. He used to be busy throughout the day in Kata and Kirtan. At six, at six o'clock in the evening, he took prasad. From six o'clock to eight o'clock, he rested. From eight o'clock to four o'clock in the morning, he remained sitting on the same Asan did and did Harinam Japa. Baba also preached Harinam Kirtan in Orissa. There he introduced Kirtan Saptaha or one week long Kirtan like the Bhagavad Saptaha, prevalent in northern India. Baba did not normally use his supernatural powers. Once while, uh, once while Akand Kirtan was going on in Hataras, a man pitifully requested him to cure his only son, who was about to die on account of an incurable disease. He expressed uh, his inability to do anything. One of his disciples said, Baba, if you had only lied and said that the boy would be all right, 
the man would, would have at least temporarily felt relieved. Baba replied, Fool, even if I had so lied, the boy would have been saved. But what, but what good would have come out of that? He would have still been in the dirty ditch of Maya and suffered birth and death. I am the Baba who pulls people out of the ditch instead of seeing them rot in it. But Baba sometimes used his power to instill in the hearts of people faith in the divine or to strengthen it. Once Gopinath Das Baba, one of his disciples, who had been professor of English in the training college, Barahanipur, said to him, Baba, I have heard about the benedictory hand of the Guru. I do not understand what exactly it means. Would you kindly explain? Baba said, Benedictory hand means this. As he said this, he stretched his benedictory hand so as to place it about a foot above his head. Immediately, he felt that a soothing current passed through his body and filled him with bliss. Also, he was attacked with such intense horripilation that he could not control it. Interesting. I think this story ends here. But some, for some reason, it looks like um, it's interrupted. I don't know. But my text ends here. And so the next is another story. This, this, these two stories, especially this second one, is amazing. We can see how amazing these saintly persons are, how much connected to uh, their Ishtadev, their uh, lordships they are. And we can see how much Nityananda Das Babaji was attracted and attached to Nam Kirtan. Practically all his powers, all his spiritual realizations, everything he got, he was, he, he, he was getting from the power of Kirtan. And many, many little details, if you have noticed how he was dealing with others, how he was helping them. We can see that he's a totally he has totally spiritual vision and and perception of life. Just like when this person came whose son was dying and he was so sad and he said, "Oh, please help somehow cure my son." And then Nityananda Das Baba said, "Why? Why should I do that?" But uh, I'm trying to f free people, not not make them sit here longer. <laughs> so so it, we can see it's, it's a totally different viewpoint, like the opposite viewpoint of those people that we are used to, you know, in this world. I think this these stories, these uh, narrations, could be read many times, again and again. The second story was a bit longer, but I suggest also myself and each of us to read it on our own also again. And I'm very sure, I'm pretty sure that we can find even more nectar by reading these stories again and again. Because if we just read them once, we just scratch the surface. And if we read it again, on our own, when we have time, new and new uh, drops and, and floods of nectar will emerge from these stories. This is like a wish-fulfilling tree. Each story of these uh, uh, 
um, each each uh, description of the lives of the saints of Raja is such a wish fulfilling tree that whenever we read it or listen to it, uh, new and new nectar comes from it, and new and new realization, new um, blissful mercy and nectar comes from it, and. Probably you are also noticing, I'm, I'm noticing when I'm reading this, that this is the same as if we were associating uh, directly with these people, with these personalities. And it is said, um, I cannot really quote the Sanskrit, something like, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Hoy, Sad, uh, lava matra sadhu sangha sarva siddhi hoy. That means lava matra. If we only have one split of a second of the association of the sadhu, of a great personality, we get all the siddhis, we get all the blessings. We, what's the greatest blessing is the great blessing of bhakti, of, of our, uh, loving service to Radha Mohan. So, so this is the greatest gift that we can get from association with these Mahatmas, these beautiful saintly personalities. And each of these stories is so great that just by reading it, by hearing about their lives, is as if we got a living association of these persons. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure we were all uh, inspired by these stories. And um, that's it for today.